Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. In this video we are talking about getting stock prices and actually understand them. First of all, we have to make sure that the Pandas data reader is actually installed, which is not installed by default in Anaconda. So open up your terminal and type in conda install pandas minus data reader. If you're using, for example, IDLE, type in pip install pandas minus data reader. After installing, we have to make sure that we import all the necessary modules. And that is the pandas underscore data reader dot data as reader to actually get our stock prices from the internet, the datetime module as dt to create datetime objects, and matplotlet.pyplot as plt to actually visualize our stock prices. Now the first step is to define our time horizon and we will do that by defining our start date as start and we will take the first May here. You will understand in some minutes why I'm taking this date. After you've written that down, you have to create a daytime object out of that. And that is easily done by calling our data module, which we are defined as dt here. And then we are taking the date function and taking these here as the arguments of this function. Done. You have created the daytime object. The same holds for the end date and we will take dt date here and we are going plus two weeks here. So we are taking the 15th of May in this place. As said, you will understand why I'm taking this time horizon in some minutes. Also, we need to define the stock we are interested in. So let's create a variable which we are calling stocks and let's take a look at Apple first. Here you have to provide the ticker symbol. The next step is the online request and we will store the results of this online request in a variable which we are calling the app. You can call it whatever you like. Now we are accessing the pandas data reader which we are defined above as reader and we are providing get underscore data underscore and here you have to define the data source and we are taking Jahoo here. Now we need to provide the arguments stocks which is Apple and the starting date and the ending date here. Let's execute that and print that out. And what we are getting is the data frame of our online request here. Now let us understand this data frame. What we are seeing here is that the dates are the index of this data frame. And these dates are only including trading days. You are seeing skips here. And that is when there is, for example, a weekend. The columns are kind of self-explanatory. So we have the highest price on this specific day here, the lowest price, the first price, and the last price on this day. The volume is just the number of stocks traded on that day. The next column is going to be interesting, the adjusted closed price. You will read everywhere, well, this is just the closed price corrected for stock splits and dividends. Well, yes, but what does that mean? Well, if we are doing a row-wise comparison between the adjusted close column and the close column, we are noticing that the adjusted close price is a bit below the close price, right? So we are doing that row-wise. Below, 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 below. <gasps> the same. On the 8th May, the price is the same. And I'm promising you, until today, it is the same price as the close price. But why? And I've prepared the NASDAQ dividend history table for you. I will link that in the video description, of course. And if we are taking a look at that, that totally makes sense, as on the 8th May, the stock is traded X dividend, without dividend, whatsoever. All in all, we are interested in the adjusted close price, as the dividend is taken into consideration. Okay, we got that. So let's analyze the Apple stock in the last 20 years. So let us, let's actually zoom a bit out here and let's go back to our request data. And we are just defining the start date as 2000 and let's take the 1st January there. For the end value, well, let's just take the most recent date and you can easily do that by just taking dt.datetime, carry out that and then calling the now function. And then we're executing that one here. And when we are doing the request now, we are only interested in the adjusted close column. Okay, so we are adding squared brackets here and just say, okay, we only want to get the adjusted close column out of this request here. And if we're executing that and printing out the data frame again, we are getting Apple's price from the 1st January until today. Okay. And what would be the next step? Well, we would like to 
visualize that. Okay, so how can we do that? Well, that's actually pretty easy. You are just typing in DF as the DF is only the adjusted close price here. And you're just typing in dot plot. And after that, you are typing in plt.show and execute that. And now we're getting this pretty nice chart of Apple. Of course, you could um, name those axes here, but I'm not doing it right now. So pretty nice, right? We are getting this insane price chart of Apple here. What is also important and pretty interesting as well is to take a look at the relative price changes or also called daily returns. Until now, we just took a look at the absolute price changes here, right? And Pandas has a pretty nice built-in function to actually achieve that. So let's create a variable which we are calling daily returns. And now we are calling the data frame and just use the PCT underscore change function of pandas. And if we are executing that, and of course print that out, we are getting the relative price changes on every day. Pretty awesome, right? So if we are plotting that, we would get an overview of the volatility. So if we are just taking daily returns and then plotting that using plt.show, we are getting an overview of the volatility of Apple. Pretty nice, right? Okay, now let's consider two stocks. Let's compare Apple to Microsoft. So let's get back to our request here. And in this stocks variable, we are adding Microsoft. And therefore we have to create a list with the ticker symbols. So we need MSFT, which is the ticker symbol for Microsoft here, and store it in the list. Then we're executing that and do the exact same request again, right? So we are just interested in the adjusted close of those two equities. And if we are printing this out, we are getting the price comparison between Apple and Microsoft. And on the first side, we are noticing that the Apple price is times 100 today, right? And the Microsoft price is roughly uh, times 6 today, right? Now, let us plot that. So let's plot this data frame again. And we are noticing that Apple kind of, and remember my words, kind of outperformed Microsoft here, right? To be honest with you, this chart is totally misleading. We are comparing absolute price changes here. Instead, we have to compare the relative price changes of the stocks. So let us take a look at the daily returns again. If we are executing this now, and actually print that out, we are getting the daily returns of those two stocks here. Now we have to accumulate these daily returns to actually make those stocks comparable. And we can easily achieve that by defining a new variable, daily accumulated returns. And we are just taking our daily returns plus one, and then we are accumulating them by the product. And if we are executing that and actually print that out again, we are getting the accumulated returns. And now we can plot and compare those two equities. So let us plot the daily accumulated returns and see what happens. We are getting this insane difference between Apple and Microsoft. So remember that if you want to compare stocks with their prices, you have to take the cumulative returns and not the absolute price changes. That's it for today. I hope you had fun watching this video. In the upcoming tutorial, we will do stuff like benchmarking and a deeper dive into a stock comparison with, for example, the correlation coefficient. I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.